<laughs> My name is Jackie Dixon and I run a company called VLX where I train Christian women to become what I call the biblical bombshell, which is a woman who's healthy, holy, and hot because she's on fire for God in every area of her life. So my three month old is finally down for a nap. And so we're finally going to do this Saturday scope. And I'm thinking about moving off of Periscope over to Facebook Live, but we'll see. I may keep my Saturday scopes here and then just do Facebook Live videos for a private Facebook group that I run. Um, I'll keep you posted, but for now I will still be here on Saturday. So what I want to talk about today is the blog post I sent out on Wednesday. And again, this is part of a series that I've been doing. It's from a few years ago where I talk about the time I spent in Nice on a school study abroad trip. So I was there studying with, um, neurologists. I was shadowing neurologists in France and the South of France in Nice. And I was there because I wanted to know more about the hospital experience, but I wasn't officially pre-med. Uh, and so I kind of got around that by shadowing somebody in France instead of being here in the U.S. So while I was there, I expected, because I, I kind of also wanted to go to France because I thought this is so chic. I love this country, even though I hadn't been there since I was three. I think I'm going to really love it. <laughs> so I went over there thinking I was going to become this incredibly slim, chic European woman. And instead I gained 25 pounds in five weeks. It was hardcore and <laughs> it wasn't muscle weight. I wasn't sitting there lifting at the gym. This was pastry fat basically because my appetite was so out of control. So what happened of course is as the weight piled on, it's the summer in the south of France. So it's not really reasonable to go around in pants and a long sleeve shirt, but that's what I was doing to hide myself. I was miserable. I was so ashamed because I had kind of established this identity back at my university at home as a model. I had been modeling with an agency for a few years and now I was packing on the pounds so fast and I was going to have to go back and kind of face the people who thought of me one way with a very, very different looking body. So I was not excited and I was extremely, extremely ashamed. But what I was really dealing with was something that I now call body shame. And I talked about the overall definition of it last week and the symptoms that we have that reveal that it's underneath the surface, even though we don't feel it. So things like getting angry when we're around someone who we think is really attractive, who we can feel that we're not as good as in some sense. And we lash out with kind of a bitterness or a sarcasm when it's really just that we feel ashamed because we don't think we've measured up. So that's what we talked about last week. This week, I want to talk about the foundations of this body shame. Where did it come from? I think you're going to be surprised by the fact that this goes back all the way to the beginning. If I can turn on my iPad here, here we go. So what I want to do is go over this blog post that I wrote, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about the beginning of body shame. So this takes us all the way back to Genesis. And you guys are probably real familiar with this story. Even if you aren't, you know, a real dedicated Bible studying Christian, you've probably heard the story of Adam and Eve and their fall from grace in the Garden of Eden. So Adam and Eve are created by God. And right after he creates them and he kind of tells them to marry each other and sends them off and, you know, wedded bliss, <laughs> supposedly, he then says, you know, he tells them don't eat from this particular tree too. So Eve's on her own at some point after God's, you know, gone off, etc. <laughs> and Satan comes around in the form of a snake. So let me read this to you. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. You will certainly not die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So Satan is really working Eve over. His first trick here is to try to convince her that she didn't hear God's word right, that he gave her the wrong command or she kind of misheard him. He says, are you sure you heard that correctly? Are you sure that's what God said? You know, did God really say that? Is this literal, this literal verse here? But Eve doesn't fall for that yet. She says, yes, he definitely said that. He said, we may, she specifies, we may eat fruit from the other trees, but God did say that we must not eat fruit from this one tree. So she knows what she's doing and she hasn't stumbled yet. So Satan takes a different tact. He tells her, you're not necessarily going to die. It's just that God knows that if you do this, you'll be like him. And he doesn't want that to happen. He doesn't have your best interests at heart. You can't trust him. You can't trust what he's telling you. You have to figure it out for yourself. You have to take control, take responsibility and 
have the power that God has and determine what is right and what is wrong for yourself. That's essentially what Satan is doing here. And this time Eve falls for it. And of course, unfortunately, she takes a pretty weak Adam right down with her. So what happens? Satan's gone, Adam and Eve eat, and it says, Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Now, I say this in the blog post, and it's hilarious to me that that's the first thing they realize, right? This is the fall from grace. And suddenly they realize one thing. Not that Adam has a deeper voice, or that they have body hair, and Eve really feels that she should shave, or that... You know, they see the animals and the plants differently. Something in their perspective changes. Something they realize changes, and it's that they're naked. It's an awareness that their body is uncovered, and they're not okay with that suddenly. They're not okay with that anymore. So they make clothes for themselves, and then they hide. <laughs> so God comes along and says, The man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, which some people say is the evening, and they hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden. But God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. That's really admirable honesty, you know? Another thing I think of every time I read this is, why didn't you say, oh, I'm just getting something, I'll be right there, or, you know, I'm really, I'm not feeling well tonight, Lord, could we walk tomorrow? <laughs> no, he honestly says, I heard you, and I'm naked, and so I was afraid, and I hid. So, God says, who told you you were naked? Uh-oh, <laughs> Adam and Eve are in trouble. He says, have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Well, the joke's up, right? God knows what's happened. He probably already knew even before he discovered that this happened. And now Adam and Eve are hiding from God, and God is fully aware that they've disobeyed him. Now, what's interesting is he says, he goes on, and the Lord God says, the man has now become like one of us, and he goes on through all the different punishments that have to happen. But the most interesting thing to me is that even though they have to be cast out of the garden and punished, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Some people think this is kind of animal skin or fur. Um, so after all this has happened, when they've disobeyed God blatantly, he still cares for them. But interestingly, the thing he does to care for them is he covers their body. The shame that was the first thing they discovered as soon as they ate this fruit was that they're naked. And then they were ashamed. They had the body shame. And then God covers their body. So this could have been completely different. It could have been they ate the fruit and they realized... They had an incredible appetite, and they really wanted to eat, you know, bison or chocolate or something. And so God provides them food as he takes them out of the garden. But it's all instead about covering up their bodies. That is so interesting to me. We were meant to be naked and unashamed in our bodies. In fact, earlier, the Bible says, which I really, you know, none of this has happened yet. So it seems like this most random verse. Let me see if I can find it here. Here we go. Um... Wait a second, where did it go? Well, I can't find it off the top of my blog here. Oh, here we are. Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Why? Like, okay, so who cares? That doesn't make any sense yet. And then when we go through the rest of the story, we see why that's actually of incredible significance. But that was the original design that we were meant to be nude in our bodies and feel no shame about that. Now think about what's happened today, right? How does body shame affect us today? Well. I think that this foundational beginning of this incredibly deep problem now appears today in people who hide their bodies with baggy and dumpy clothing, or who overtly display their bodies with immodest clothing, hoping that someone will affirm them, <laughs> or um, who hide themselves even with excess weight because they don't want to be known to some extent, and so they're eating to avoid letting someone come in, in a way. And that's a very complicated subject. If you're looking at me like, what are you talking about? I'll go into that more in the future, I promise. But that's a big way you can hide from people, actually, is to eat and gain a lot of weight. It almost creates a barrier between you, and it keeps them in your mind, at least, and I'm speaking because I did this for a short period of time. Um, it makes you feel like if I'm not attractive, if I'm overweight, no one will come in and try to love me, and then I don't have to deal with them actually knowing me. I've got this barrier around myself, and I don't have to worry about intimacy because I'm kind of shielding myself. And of course, I'm also spending my time eating and using that to comfort myself instead of letting people in, letting people love me. So, whew. <laughs> but that's another way that we can react to the sense of body shame. So there's all kinds of different painful ways this can manifest in our modern lives. But what I don't think is often addressed when we talk in the common, you know, modern Christian church about the importance of modesty or 
the few churches that mention it, the importance of eating well and taking care of your body. Why do we have so much emotional turmoil around our physical bodies? Well, we know that our bodies are important because as Christians, if Christ raised from the dead physically and we're going to be physically resurrected in some way too, the physical body does have significance. We're not just casting it off and only becoming kind of spiritual, nebulous, you know, ghosts. <laughs> we will be embodied somehow. So our bodies are extremely important. But there's so much baggage around it. And I really think that looking at Genesis and realizing that this was the first, I mean, there were many, but this was one of the first, and I would say primary results of that original sin in the fall is where we must realize like, wow, something major happened here. The man and woman who represent all of humanity, the first time they disobeyed God, the first result was that they realized they were naked and they were shamed and they covered their naked bodies and they hid. They hid their physical bodies. They covered it from each other in a way, they covered it from themselves so they wouldn't see it themselves. They were dressed. They covered it from God and then they hid from his whole presence. And this is a huge, huge deal. So what I want you to take away from this is the understanding that it's not just because you're crazy or, you know, you've had some, you know, random experience or whatever, or you're off and what's wrong with you, that you have a lot of emotions around your body. If this is an area where you've had a lot of struggle, and not just, oh, can I control my diet, you know, counting calories kind of thing, but a true emotional, just deep struggle with grief or despair or control or anxiety, then I need you to know that that's normal. <laughs> if you look at this, of course you would. This is a huge result of sin. So we all have this. Now, I think you might think, well, a lot of people don't, but I think most people do. They either don't admit it, many, many people don't admit it, or they aren't aware of it, or unfortunately, it's coming <laughs> as they age and it's gonna bite them in the rear. <laughs> and if they don't have problems with their bodies now, they will be wrestling with this whole, my body isn't what I want it to be. My body isn't acting as I want it to act. What can I do? My body's driving me nuts. I'm trapped in my body, all of this kind of stuff as it slowly declines as they age. So at one point or another, I think we're all gonna be dealing with this body shame. And all I need you to know is that as you start to get in touch with the shame you may have around your body, it's not your fault. It's not just you. You don't have a problem. You are living in a broken world where everyone is experiencing this because it was one of the first results of sin. So take it easy on yourself. Realize that this is heavy stuff. And if no diets ever worked and you can't just, you can't discipline yourself for some reason or whatever, it's because this is a much bigger issue than just a matter of pick the right diet. Even when people seem to succeed with having a healthy diet and a healthy exercise routine and just a healthy lifestyle overall, there are so many other areas where our body comes into play. Obviously, this is what we go through life in. So when I'm with my husband, I'm in my body. When I'm hanging out with my girlfriends, I'm in my body. When I'm walking around in public and other different looking people are around me, I'm in my body. When I'm giving a presentation, I'm in my body. And you might be thinking, duh. But that means that how I think about my body is affecting how I act and how I think in each of those different situations. So if I'm not comfortable in my body, I sure as heck don't wanna share it with my husband. If I'm not comfortable in my body, I'm going to be griping about it to my girlfriends. If I'm not comfortable in my body, I'm going to be comparing myself to people on the street. If I'm not comfortable in my body, I'm going to be wondering what people think of me as I give that presentation. My whole mind isn't going to be focused on the task at hand. So this is a major issue. And if you are having troubles around this, don't beat yourself up. I think the only people who don't think they're having troubles aren't aware of it. <laughs> or as I said, they haven't had them yet. But unfortunately, they're coming because this is a broken world. So what do we need when we can't even guarantee that even if we do take great care of our bodies, that it will still be healthy and well? Well, we learn how to think about them in a way that detaches our identity from them. I talk all about this in the Body Stewardship course, and it's really too much to go into now or this will be an hour long periscope. But essentially, when we can detach our identity from the way we look, even though we will always be embodied in some way, from the way our body acts and performs. We can see it as a tool. And then how it does or doesn't perform or does or doesn't look doesn't become emotionally heavy to us. And we can detach ourselves and say, okay, here's the situation. It's not healthy for me. It's not allowing me to serve God to my fullest extent. It's bringing me a lot of grief or it's taking a lot of my time or whatever. It's stressing me out. I want to address this, but I'm not a bad person. Now, I'm gonna talk more about shame in the next couple of periscopes but there's just, there's a lot here. <laughs> Let me just leave you with that. There's a lot here. And so I don't want you to be hard on yourself if it's a tough area for you, if it's a place where you've struggled for a long time. Now, 
If you are on my email list or you follow me on my Facebook page, you've probably seen the announcement that I'm holding a retreat all about body stewardship and what this actually looks like and how to live it out. I teach the body stewardship course, but that's an online course. And I don't generally have the chance to work with women in person and show them what caring for their bodies really, really looks like, what it takes, how it feels, how their schedule might need to be adjusted, how to get that mindset. I don't get the chance to put hands on them and pray over them. There's a lot that can be done in person that I can't do through my online course. So if that interests you at all, I really encourage you to come and check it out. Just consider if it's for you. It's going to be held in Miami at the end of June, June 24th through 26th. So last weekend in June at the Palms Hotel, which if you've been to Miami or you just Google this online, you'll see it's a really nice luxe hotel. They have their own garden on site that they cook from in their restaurant, which apparently is a pretty phenomenal restaurant for being in a hotel. It's got a fabulous spa, beautiful pool. It's right on the ocean. It's a perfect place to rest and relax. We're going to be doing some workouts on the beach. I've already called them and told them, and they're cool with it. We're going to be doing teachings by the pool. You can have free time. You can go get massages or go shopping or just walk the beach and reflect on everything we're learning. But it's a fabulous opportunity to see how this is done in person. I just had a baby three months ago. <laughs> I am absolutely relearning how to steward my body with a new set of circumstances, a new set of variables and controls that I really can't change, such as breastfeeding. <laughs> there's just, you know, I think that's the way I want to do it. And so there's nothing I can do about that, but that changes my body and I have to work with that. So I'm so excited to see these ladies in person because we're really going to be talking about all of our different life circumstances and situations and how can we steward our bodies well in them? What is God calling us to and how can we work with what we've got to work with to take great care of them and experience that flourishing wellness. So I can't even tell you how excited I am about this. I'm so thrilled. So if you're interested in that, if that sounds at all appealing, go to my Facebook page and the cover photo right now is an image of it. And if you click on that, it will show you the link where you can go and read more about it and tell me that you're interested and see when it's going to be held and get all the extra details. And I will get in touch with you. My Facebook page is facebook.com backslash Jackie Dixon VLX. So that's where you'll find it. So I would love to see you there. If you've got someone you think who would be interested in this, tell them about it. I really can't explain enough how important it is to see how someone lives something. I've been stewarding my body quite successfully for the last few years after few years before that of just total disaster, crash diets and lots of weight gain and lots of blood, sweat and tears, if you will. And I finally come to a place where no matter what's happening in my body, I love it and I care for it well. So I would love to teach you to do the same. Check out my Facebook page. If that interests you again, it's facebook.com backslash Jackie Dixon VLX. I love you guys. Thank you for joining me here. Go out and shine. Take good care of yourself. Get right and close with God so you can have that peace that transcends everything you're going through so you can have the clarity to do the right thing in every situation so you can have the grace to love on the people around you and so you can shine and people who are lost and desperately looking for that unconditional love God gives can find him through the way you're living and the way you speak to them with that love and truth. Thanks again for joining me here. If you loved this, I really invite you to come and follow me. My main website is JackieDixon.org, and I have a free guide there to how to be a biblical bombshell if that concept intrigues you. So I'll see you guys here next week, and have a fabulous day. Bye.